Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. Uh, this isn't going to be a stamping video, but um, I was just going through some old office things and I came across all of my old uh, plate layouts and uh, some people have been kind of curious as to the uh, the actual process of making stamps in the past and I thought I would, uh, before I toss all these things out, kind of go into the process a little bit. I was able to find some of the plates as well, or I happen to have one of the plates out and uh, one of the molds, so I thought I would go into it. But this is an example of a hard copy paste up that we used to have to do um, for each of the plates and molds that we press our stamps from. I'm not someone as a manufacturer that ever went into the uh, vulcanizing process, which is the act of, you know, making, pressing rubber, you know, into molds and uh, getting rubber stamps from them. But we certainly had to do all the paste ups for them. Now this is the Lakeside Cove large and Full Moon large, Spruce Tree large here. And uh, this is a 9 by 12 inch plate. Those were the standard size plates that I used to go with on all of my plates. So you'd always try to maximize the amount of space on here uh, in terms of the number of um, uh, images you can get on here, stamps you can get on here, without crowding things so bad that you would have a hard time cutting in between them. So that was always one of the tricks. You don't want to, you want to maximize the space without, you know, overcrowding where you'd get one um, image or stamp blending in with the other one. Okay, that would be a problem. All right, so this one right here is what, this image right here is what they would call five up. There's five of them on one plate. And um, I spent, we have hundreds of plates and this is using one of our larger stamps. So you can imagine what, you know, like a little small design like this would be. I would have to go and get copies um, of the original. I was in Kinko's a lot of times late at night at the 24 hour Kinko's copies types of places and just running off copy after copy after copy, playing around with the uh, dark and lighten thing, you know, um, to get the things, the images just right. And uh, yeah, I would go into, you know, a Kinko's copies as opposed to doing it on a home printer because the copies were better. Now these days we would just bypass this whole process of doing all these little plate layouts. You can see my little white out, you know, liquid paper things getting, um, you know, a lot of those little smudgy marks out of the way or a little, if there was one little dot there, you'd have to kind of, you know, white it out. Otherwise it would print out on the plate and you don't want to have like this raised thing on the plate. All right. But this is what you had to do in the past. These days it would be a, you'd lay all these things out in like a Adobe Illustrator or a graphics program. Uh, application, whatnot, and you would just do this digitally. You'd make a PDF and just upload it, you know, online. But I don't know, it didn't feel like too long ago that we were still doing these hard copy plates like this, sending out the physical uh, plate somewhere, layout, not plate. And uh, from there, all right, they would do probably a horizontal format camera, and you'd be pressing. Now, this isn't the uh, the negative from this one. I couldn't find the negative for this one, but this is an example of a negative of one of, of the uh, plates. This is an old design that I kind of discontinued here called Canyon, but anyways, what you can see all of this little... I, I forgot, I was trying to remember the name of this. I think it... it's... I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but anyways, this is a negative, it's film, okay, and someone has put this on a light table and gone with this opaque uh, paint kind of thing. It's like li using like liquid paper except it's this other kind of material, but that is opaque and light won't shine through it, so there is all these little things, you know, when we had to go through this process. Can you imagine someone having to do that and mark off every little dot, you know, that was around here? Because we want to pick up a lot of detail on this, so what this was probably doing was where I had cut out, see that little, you know, area, 
you know, like right around here where I've pasted this up, it was the camera was probably picking up some of the shadow right there. So I had to go in and black all that out around every design like that. So there was, you know, it was laborious, you know, tedious work uh, and time consuming. Uh, you know, in terms of the process of just getting it. Okay, now this is the first generation, right? Getting copies, doing this layout. Second, uh, second generation, um, doing this negative like this. And what they would do from the negative is they would take that and through a uh, photographic process, they would burn or print. Um, this image like that onto this material's magnesium, okay? And it would be printed in some sort of acid resisting ink, okay? Maybe it would just be some kind of water based ink or whatnot. I'm not quite sure. Um, but it would get printed on this metal, in this case it's a magnesium plate, okay? And this plate is dropped. Okay, now this is raised right now, right? You can see that ridge there. This is dropped into an acid bath, okay? And the acid is eating away uh, to a depth uh, that you would specify, you know, this image right here, okay? And someone's doing this, and there's different ways they can do it. You want it to, I, I want my images to be as vertical as possible. In other words, where that rubber is sticking out, because sometimes you would get these uh, times when someone doing this acid bath process left a little bit of a shoulder, so it's like if there's a dot right down here, you know, it's more of like a pyramid, you know, and the dot's right here. I want, you know, the dot to be like this. And, more of a vertical, I think you get a more crisp impression of it that way when you're inking these things up. But anyways, when you get a nice uh, plate like this, magnesium plate, acid ba bathed plate, and what they do from this, now let me see, this is the third generation, we have one, two, you know, Xerox, or copies, negative, printed on here, Third, you know, that's three generations away from the original drawing. They, from here, now this is a positive, right? It's a raised uh, image, right, of the design. But from that, they take this thing called, I think this material is called Bakelite. Maybe there was other things it was called, but I don't know. They, it's basically a mold, okay? Or they also call it a matrix, uh, depending on probably the manufacturer, whoever's making your uh, stamps, this thing, this board has to get heated up and it's basically put into an iron, okay? And then you have this your, uh, magnesium plate and this, you know, of course goes right into there and through either a manual or hydraulic um, press, vulcanizing process, this is pressed down into a heated up material, okay? And hopefully this is getting pressed down all the way and perfectly even, right? Because you want all your stamps to be of equal um, height when they're made. This is pulled out of here. Somehow in the cooling process, this matrix, bakelite board, whatever you call it, mold is allowed to cure and harden, okay? And, and uh, it has to harden really well because this is going to be put into an oven again, the uh, vulcanizer, they call it. It's going to get heated up every time because when they put in, you know, raw sheets of rubber, and this is the actual sheet that would come out of this mold, um, it's going to get heated up every time, you know, this board over and over and over again and subjected to um, pressures, you know, uh, from the pressing process and they're pressing this natural red rubber into the uh, mold, you know, there's this big press that's coming down in this heated up oven and then out from this comes your sheet of rubber with your rubber stamps on there. Um, 
in a positive uh, form again. Or wait, let me see. This is negative, right? Positive. Well, positive in terms of the relief of it, okay? It's actually a negative from the design because the final impression, right, is going to be like that. And you're going to get an impression, you know, of the design itself. And hopefully that through, let's see, five different generations, okay, this piece of rubber and all that little detail in there will still remain uh, true to the original drawing in terms of the line weight and detailing that goes into it. Um, because when we're taking that, of course, we have this is the uh, uh, Lakeside Cove here, but when we take these rubber stamps right here, and if we're using it in a traditional maple process or whatnot, or if you're using unmounted rubber stamps on an acrylic block with either the cling foam or the material like this tack and peel, what I'm getting at is you have a rubber stamp on that material, okay? We're inking it up. It could be a really juicy pad where you get a lot of ink into the detail. And then we're using pressures once again to press and make impressions of that design onto our card or paper cardstock or whatever you're stamping on glass with, uh, you know, um, stays on inks or something like that. You were taking a lot of generations away from the original drawing, so every step of the pro you know process you know has to you know be as close to the original drawing as possible, so that by the time we get to that final impression, you know that stamp of ours is going to work and give us as close to a replication or approximation of that original design, so that we get you know so that when we're drawing these things and designing rubber stamps we have a pretty good idea that however much detail we put into them it'll be retained through so many generations away to the end process of the end user the rubber stamper making their cards with that okay so it, it's always remarkable to me that you know in a process like this of you know printing onto a magnesium plate and doing these acid bath washes, eating away at that, you know, as fine a little detail as possible, you know, that can be made into a rubber stamp, you know, the mold process that we get as detailed an image as we do. So luckily, <laughs> I don't know, Whoever came up with this process of making rubber stamps and molds and all that, you know, camera work, um, negatives, which thankfully they don't have to do anymore in the digital process, um, everything works out just fine, you know, in terms of the tiniest little details, you know, being retained uh, all the way through the process, so. Anyways, that's a little bit of a um, uh, explanation, you know, someone that actually presses rubber and uses the vulcanizing process knows a lot more about that end than me, but this is just in terms of the uh, the layouts and whatever, you know, the, the uh, artwork together for it and uh, pretty much what we used to have to do, but we might not have to do paste-ups like this anymore, and someone doesn't have to do all that little detailed work and, you know, using that opaque uh, paint on the process, but in terms of the, uh, the magnesium plates and someone having to get, the, you know, that acid bath down just right and get the uh, exact depth of the image that we want just right to the mold and the pressing of the rubber, those steps still remain today. Uh, unless you're using like clear stamps or something like that, all right? But that's an entirely different process than this, but 
We choose to go with the 100% red rubber. We like the impressions that it gives. It's a natural material, and the longevity of it is um, going to be the best in terms of the, uh, you know, the stamping process. So, anyways, uh, just a little bit of a background on the process of your actual materials, and uh, for those that have asked about the process in the past. I don't know, they might have asked 10 years ago or something like that, but uh, some people still ask today and are kind of curious about it. So anyways, hope that kind of answers some of those um, questions in terms of uh, what goes into it. So anyways, thanks for watching and uh, thanks for tuning into the Stampscapes channel as always.